Hey Cleveland.com, meteorologist Kelly Reardon here. This week on The Radar, we're breaking down what's fact and fiction when it comes to sunburn. Summer is finally here, which means biking, hiking, and heading to the beach to soak up some rays. But there's nothing worse than coming home from a day in the sun and having a stinging red sunburn. Sure, we all know sunscreen is important, but how much do people really know about what it takes to stop sunburn and a chance of skin cancer? I headed to University Hospitals to talk with Dr. Korn Honda, the Director of Dermatopathology, to answer all of your sunburn-related questions. So there are some studies that show that people who use sunscreen may actually be at increased risk of skin cancer, not necessarily a sunburn, uh, but there is a, a thought that there is a studies that show that people who use sunscreen may be at higher risk of getting skin cancer, but it's kind of a chicken and egg. People who use sunscreen are generally people who are out in the sun, uh, so those people are at, at risk of, suns, of skin cancer. A lot of people try to get protective suntans uh, before going out for on a summer vacation, so they'll go to the tanning booth or they'll <clears throat> lie outside for a while to try to get a tan that, that will protect them from a sunburn. It is true you get a very small benefit from getting a suntan. Your SPF rating would be about a 2, so much smaller than what you could get with a sunscreen. And the problem is you're damaging your skin in order to get that suntan. A and UVB mm -hmm. rays can both still go through the glass? Yes, okay. so exactly. It's the, you can't see those ultraviolet rays, but they're still passing through the clouds and can still uh, damage your skin. It's not as much as if on a sunny day, mm -hmm. but there's, it's still out there. Like, is there? Difference? So once you go above SPF 30, the incremental benefit is less. So th you will get a very small increased benefit from going from SPF 30 to SPF 100, but the amount of protection is probably about 1% or less. So in general, you want to look for a active ingredient that is a broad spectrum protector. Okay. And the four main ingredients that offer a good broad spectrum of protection. Those are the physical blockers like titanium or zinc oxide. Those physically, when the sun hits them, bounces the light off, the ultraviolet light off, so it protects your skin that way. And then there are chemical sunscreens which absorb the light of the sun, the ultraviolet energy, and then turns it into heat which is safe for your skin and dissipates it that way. But either titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, mixoral, or avobenzone are four of the best broad spectrum um, blockers that we have. And so when the FDA releases or approves an SPF rating, they're actually looking at at a certain amount of thickness of the sunscreen on a certain area of skin, usually a centimeter square. And most studies show that people use only about half of that amount. So be more generous when you're applying either a lotion, a block, or a gel, or a spray lotion. Uh, but we, the most common locations are areas that are exposed to the sun. So our head and our neck are very common. Our nose tends to stick out a little bit more than other parts of our face, so our nose is fairly commonly involved. Uh, but also we can get it on our hands, our forearms, but by far we see most on the head and neck. Two main types of skin cancers. There's the non-melanoma skin cancers, the most common types. Mm -hmm. For those, you want to look for any sore that's not healing, a lesion that bleeds or hurts or changes, get, is getting larger or is changing in size or, or color. For melanoma, which is usually a different type of skin cell that's producing the melanoma, but it can be a more aggressive cancer, those are typically colored. Uh, as opposed to the non-melanoma skin cancers, which are more pink or red mm -hmm. in color. The melanoma will have a distinct color to it usually. And the things that we look for there are the A, B, C, Ds, e, or you can add an E if you want. A stands for asymmetry. Most of your moles should be pretty symmetric, no matter how, to, how you cut it. It should, be, it should look the same on the two sides. B stands for border. You should have a nice sharp border on it. You shouldn't have little fingers sticking out. C stands for color. It should have a uniform color throughout. You don't want a red area, a pink area, a dark brown area, a light tan area, a black area in there. And then D, we used to use for diameter, greater than six millimeters, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, if you still use those. I know computers <laughs> replace pencils a lot, but uh, we, <clears throat> we, that's one good measure. D, you could also use for different. A mold that looks different than others, so what's called an ugly duckling, it looks a lot different than other molds, or a mold that becomes different, that changes. It changes in color, shape, size, it bleeds or it hurts. 
And you could also use F for E, evolving, to, or you could use D for, for that.